in this lesson, we want to talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. All right, so as we continue to talk about finding zeros of polynomial functions, we're going to come across the fundamental theorem of algebra, which basically tells us that every polynomial function of degree n will have n complex roots, but we're going to see some of these may be repeats. So let me cover a few things real fast before we continue. I want to make sure you understand what I just said. So let's look at something like this. So f of x equals, let's say, x cubed minus x squared plus, let's say, 2x minus 1. We should all know that this polynomial function is of degree 3, right? We think about the highest exponential power on our variable. In this case, that's going to be a 3. So the degree of the polynomial is a 3. So that's what we're talking about when we say that. Now, with our fundamental theorem of algebra, this tells us that we would expect to have three complex zeros. But again, some of these might be repeated. And I'll show you an example of this in a moment. For right now, I just want to focus on the words complex zeros. What does that mean? Remember, when we work with numbers, specifically when we say complex numbers, they're of the form a plus bi. So if I had the number five, most of you would not expect for that to be a complex number because it's just the number five. But remember, a number like five can be a part of more than one set of numbers. Five is a natural number. It's a whole number. It's an integer. It's a rational number. I could say it's five over one. It's a real number. And it's also a complex number because I can say this is five plus zero times i. OK, so all the real numbers that you work with are also complex numbers. So when you start reading things about complex solutions, you're including things that you think of as real numbers in that. OK, so let's erase that now that we have that point is clear. Now, when we talk about this fundamental theorem of algebra, basically what they're saying, and this is the setup here, you go back to the factor theorem. You say if x minus k is a factor of f of x, we know f of k is 0, right? So there's no remainder. This means if I divide f of x, my polynomial function, by this x minus k, I get some q of x, some quotient, OK? And that's all there is. There's no plus r over here. There's no remainder. So these two multiplied together give me this. Now, what this guy tells us is that let's say I have f of x, and this polynomial function is of degree one or more. So you have an x involved or whatever the variable is, it doesn't matter. And the exponent on it is a one or higher. OK, so it's not something like f of x just equals the number five. That wouldn't work. So if this guy is involved, again, one or higher for the degree, then you'll always be able to find at least one complex zero to where you can say this is x minus, I'm just going to say this is k sub one, because it's going to be my first complex zero times q sub 1 of x, OK? So you can write it like this. Then if this guy right here, you just keep this process going. If this guy right here is of degree 1 or higher, then again, you can always find at least one complex 0. So you just keep the pattern going, OK? So I can just say that this would be times x minus k sub 2. And again, I could just keep this going. So I can end up with just x minus k sub n. In the end, you're going to have a quotient that's just going to be a number. Now, that number might be 1, right? So it might be true that these guys just multiply together to give you your polynomial function. Or there might be some number here. So we typically say this is a. And this would be put out in front. So let me put this out in front here. And I'll change my color. OK, so that's how you end up with this form that you see in your book. So I want you to remember this for later because we're going to use it when we write some polynomial functions. I want to look at two examples to explain what we mean when we say that some of the complex zeros might be repeats. Let's start out with something really easy. So we have f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. And again, we already know how to find the zeros for something like this. We've been doing it forever. So let's say x squared plus 3x minus 10. Let's set this equal to 0. If we factor this to solve it, put an x here and an x here, and we know we want two integers that sum to 3 and give me a product of negative 10. Well, that would be what? It would be positive 5, and it would be negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 plus negative 2 is positive 3. OK, so the solutions here, or the zeros, would be x is equal to 
negative five and positive two. So f of negative five would be zero and f of two would be zero. Now, this is exactly what we expect because this polynomial function is of degree two, right? That's for every quadratic function. Now, let's look at this case here, which you might remember will only have one solution, but we're gonna say that it has a multiplicity of two because it's gonna occur twice. So we have our f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 16. Again, I'm going to solve this. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. So you can factor this into a binomial squared. But what I'm going to do, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to say this is x and this is x minus and minus. So two integers that sum to negative 8 and give me a product of positive 16. Well, it's going to be negative 4 and negative 4, right? Negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Okay, so the solution here is obviously x would be 4, right? So 4 is your only 0. f of 4 would be 0. But it occurs twice, right? Because you have two factors of it. So that's what the fundamental theorem of algebra is telling us. It's saying that you're going to have two zeros here but one might be repeated. All right, so there's not much to this section. You just need to understand what the fundamental theorem of algebra is telling you. Additionally, you might be asked to write some polynomial functions based on the information that you're given. So what we're given here is three zeros. So we have five, four, and negative four. And we have a point here. We have f of one equals 120, or in other words, you have one comma 120 that's on the graph of this function. Now, how could we write this polynomial function? Well, again, if I go back and I think about this form here, I would take this guy and I would just start substituting information in. So let me go back down. So what do we know? We know that there's a zero of five, there's a zero of four, and there's a zero of negative four. Now, with these problems, they're typically going to give you some instructions that say that they want a specific degree. In this case, we'd be looking for a degree of three because it gave us three zeros. Sometimes it'll tell you, give them the minimum degree required to write the polynomial. Okay, so you might see it either way. But here we're looking for a third degree. Okay, so I know that five is a zero, four is a zero, and negative four is a zero. So if five is a zero, meaning f of five equals zero, then that means x minus whatever this is, so x minus five is my factor or my divisor, okay? Then I do the same thing here. I'm gonna have x minus four, and then I'm gonna have x minus a negative four, which is x plus four. So I have f of x is equal to a times this. So this is what I gotta figure out, and then I can go through and simplify. So how do I get this? Well, I'm gonna use this point here. So basically, I know if I plugged in a one, everywhere there's an x, the result would be 120, okay? So let's scroll down for a minute, and I'm just gonna plug this in. So f of one is gonna be equal to 120. So let's just go ahead and say we have a times one minus five is negative four, and then one minus four is negative three, and then one plus four is five, and this should equal 120. So negative four times negative three is 12, 12 times five is 60, so you would have 60a equals 120. To solve for a, I would divide both sides by 60, and I would find that a is equal to two. Okay, so let's erase all this. We will have everything. So a real simple process, just tedious overall. So now what you wanna do is go through and just simplify. So if I want to kind of leave multiplying by two till the end, that's fine, or you can do it at first, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna multiply everything together and leave two off till the end. So x times x is x squared. And then my outer would be minus four x, my inner would be minus five x. So together it would be minus nine x. And my last would be plus 20. Okay, so you'd have that times this. And let me come down here, get some room going. So I would have x times x squared, which is x cubed. I'd have x times negative nine x, which is minus nine x squared, x times 20, which is plus 20x. And then I have four times everything, so you'd have plus 4x squared minus 36x, and then you would have plus 80. Okay, so what does this give me? I'll put my two out in front. I've got x cubed, nothing to combine with that. Negative 9x squared and 4x squared would give me minus 5x squared. And then 20x minus 36x would give me minus 16x. 
And then lastly, I have plus eight. Okay, so now I'm just gonna multiply everything by two. And let's scroll down and get some more room going. So I'll have two x cubed minus 10 x squared minus 32 x plus 160. Okay, so you can just box that off. This is going to be your polynomial function. Again, you can just put half of x. We have it all the way up there, but I don't want to scroll all the way back up. So f of x equals, again, this 2x cubed minus 10x squared minus 32x plus 160. Okay, let's look at one more of these, another easy topic that you come across. So the zeros, you have one, but it says it's got a multiplicity of two, and then you also have negative three. So again, this is gonna be a third degree polynomial because again, we're dealing with two zeros here. You have the one that occurs twice, and then you have another one, which is negative three. So you count that as three zeros. So you'd have a degree of three. Then we're told that F of negative one is 24. Okay, so let's write this part out first. So you'd have F of X equals, you'd have your A times, you'd have X minus one. And this occurs twice. So you can put squared like this, or you can write it out and say X minus one. And then you have x. Again, if you have a minus 3, it's going to be x plus 3. Okay, so we've got that part done. And now I just need to figure out what a is. So again, if I plugged in a negative 1 for x, so if I had negative 1 minus 1, that would be negative 2. If I had negative 1 minus 1, that would be negative 2 again. If I had negative 1 plus 3, that would be 2. So I know this is positive 8. So I can go ahead and just say that I would have 8a is equal to, the result would be 24 divide both sides by eight, and I get that a is three. So this is three. Okay, so we got that done pretty quickly. And basically what we wanna do is just simplify again. So I'm gonna say that x minus one times x minus one, that's gonna be what? It's x squared minus two times this guy times this guy. So two times x times one is two x. And then plus, we'll just go ahead and say that's negative one times negative one is one. Okay, so we've got that. Let me put my three out in front so I don't forget it. And this is gonna be multiplied by this. Okay, so let's go down here and let's go ahead and continue. So we have three times. So x times x squared is x cubed. Then x times negative two x is minus two x squared. Then x times one is plus x. You have three times everything. So I'm just gonna go plus three x squared minus six x and then plus three. Okay, so let me just combine like terms inside first. So we have three times x cubed, nothing to do with that. Then we have negative two x squared plus three x squared. That's gonna give me plus x squared. We have x minus six x, which is minus five x. And then we have plus three. Okay, so almost out of the woods, just one more step. We have three times all of this. So we would have three x cubed plus three x squared minus 15 x plus nine. And again, the f of x part is all the way up there. So let me just kind of scroll down and I'll rewrite it. So we'll just say that f of x, is equal to three x cubed plus three x squared minus 15 x plus nine. 